Hi, Kim students. Welcome to the second video in our measurement unit over significant figures. Scientific measurements are limited by the degree of exactness or precision that the measuring instrument gives us. For example, if we wish to measure the length of a paper clip with a centimeter ruler, we can estimate the length to the hundredth place, estimating one digit beyond what we can see marked on the ruler. The digits we obtain in our measurements are called significant figures. So if we look at this paper clip, there are certain digits that we can be certain of because they're marked on the instrument. For example, we can be certain that this paper clip is at least 2 centimeters. We can also be certain that it's at least 2.3 centimeters. But you can agree with me that this is between 2.3 and 2.4 centimeters. So this last digit that I'm going to make a 5 is an estimated digit. Someone else might say it looks like 2.33 to them, and their last digit would be estimated as well. Because this measurement has three digits, we're going to say it has three significant figures. Rules for significant figures will follow later. Certain instruments can give us more significant figures than others. For example, if we were to find the mass of a pet turtle using a simple toy scale, we could estimate a reading to the nearest gram. So, for example, I might say this looks like 35 grams. But with a digital balance, we could measure the turtle's mass to the nearest thousandth of a gram. For example, 35.532 grams. The digital balance is going to give us more significant figures, therefore it's more precise. The number of significant figures in a measurement is important because when we use measured numbers in a calculation, we have to round our answers to reflect the precision of the original measurement. The least precise measurement, meaning the one with the fewest significant figures, will limit the precision of our final answer. Before we can learn to round our answers in our calculations, we need to know how to count significant figures in a measurement. For more help on why significant figures are important, please see this video on our website. Rules for counting significant figures in a measurement. So the question about significant figures is when do we count zeros or not? So any number that isn't a zero is always significant. So these are numbers like 1 through 9. They're always significant. For example, in the number 6.15, all three digits are significant because none of those are zeros. And then this next number, 34,231.5678, it has nine numbers. None of those are zeros, so all nine numbers are significant figures. Zeros that are between two non-zeros are always significant figures. I call these sandwiched zeros. Sandwiched zeros, like in this example, fall between two real numbers. These are always significant, so this number would have five sig figs. Leading zeros are not sig figs. They only act as placeholders. So, we don't count them. We start at the first real digit and count to the right. So, two, zero, and three are significant. Remember, the zero is sandwiched, so it counts. So, this number would have three sig figs. This number would have one sig fig. Again, leading zeros don't count. For values written in scientific notation, all the digits in the coefficient, meaning the number in front of the power of 10, are significant digits. So this number has 3 and this number has 2. Zeros that come at the end of a number are significant, only if the number contains a decimal point. So let's look at these examples. The first number is 5200. This number has two sig figs because there's no decimal, so those last zeros don't count. The next number is also 5200, but notice that there's a decimal. This decimal is telling us that this number is exact, so all of these digits are going to count, so there's six sig figs. For 100 with a decimal place at the end, this is being exact, so all three sig figs count. But for the last one, it's also 100. The reason it's only one sig fig is because there's no decimal place, so we're assuming that the number is rounded, so it's only one sig fig. Let's look at some practice. In this first example, these three digits, none of them are zeros, so all are significant. We have three sig figs. In number two, the leading zero doesn't count, so we're going to start with the first real number and look to the right. We have three significant figures. For number three, there's no decimal, so only these three digits count as sig figs. The zeros at the end don't count, again, because there's no decimal, but we're assuming that this number's rounded. For number four, 
again, we're going to start at the first real digit, meaning a non-zero, and we're going to count to the right. So we have three significant figures. For number five, none of these are zeros, so they're all significant. Four, six, six. And lastly, for number six, these leading zeros don't count. We're going to start with the five and go to the right, so we have two significant figures. The more practice you do with sig figs, the better you get. Some numbers will have infinite sig figs, so don't let this confuse you. Let me tell you the rules. Exact numbers, meaning numbers that are obtained by counting rather than measuring, are assumed to have infinite significant figures. For example, you count the number of eggs left in the carton and find it to be eight. This number has infinite significant figures because it's exact. There's no uncertainty. So if you look at my picture here, there's obviously eight eggs. We're not guessing that there's eight eggs. There's not eight and a half eggs. There's exactly eight eggs. So this number has an infinite number of sig figs. Definitions, meaning numbers that arise from definitions, are also exact, meaning they have an infinite number of sig figs. For example, our metric conversions, like one meter is equal to 100 centimeters, the one and the hundred have infinite significant figures. Using sig figs in calculations. Addition and subtraction. Round the answer so that it has the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the least number of decimal places, which is the least precise measurement. So let's look at example one. If we add together all of these numbers, without rounding, we're going to get 616.11. Now we need to round our answer to the least precise measurement. So we're going to look here at decimal places. The first number and the second number both have one decimal place. The other numbers have more decimal places. So we want to round to the least number of decimal places in our measurement, which would be one decimal place. So our answer should have one decimal place. So to round to one decimal place, I'm going to look at that decimal place and then I'll look at the decimal after it. Since this number is not five or larger, we're not going to round up. So, my final answer is 616.1. Number two, when I subtract, I get a number of 13.5. I'm going to look at my measurements. This one has one decimal place, and this one has no decimal places. You always want to choose the least precise measurement and round your answer accordingly. So my answer needs zero decimal places. Because this number is a five, it's going to round my whole number up. So the correct and final answer would be 14. The rules for rounding with significant figures in multiplication and division are different. Round the answer so that it has the same number of total significant figures as the measurement with the least number of total significant figures. So this time we're not looking at decimal places, we're looking at the entire number. When I multiply 52.3 and 8.8, .8, I get the number 460.24. Not all those digits are significant. If I look at my first measurement, this has three significant figures. If I look at my second measurement, it has two. You always want to round to the least precise measurement. This means my answer needs two sig figs. The first two numbers are significant. Now, rounding to 46 wouldn't make any sense. What I'm going to round to is 460. If I don't put a decimal at the end, that last zero is not significant, so I still have two significant figures in this answer. Number two, if I divide five divided by 2.2, I'm gonna get an answer of 2.27 repeating. My first measurement has one sig fig, my second measurement has two. You always wanna round to the least number of significant figures. So my answer should have one sig fig. Here's my one sig fig, I look at the digit after. The digit after is not five or larger, so it's not big enough to round up. So my final answer is just two. Again, the more you practice with these, the better you're going to get. So most importantly, we're going to do a lot of labs in chemistry this year, so you need to be able to round your lab measurements to the correct number of significant figures. So when reading measurements from equipment in the lab, it's essential to include all known digits plus a last estimated digit. So here are some instructions. Look for the interval on the piece of equipment. 
This is the smallest division you can see marked off. You must estimate one decimal place beyond the value of the interval on the equipment. So for example, if you look at the picture of the graduated cylinder I have below, the interval is actually worth one milliliter. I realize that it's jumping from 30 to 40 in the zoomed in picture here, but that's just what's labeled, which is the difference of 10 milliliters. But we're looking at the smallest tick marks those smallest tick marks increase by one milliliter. So that is your interval. When I'm doing my measurement, I need to estimate. So I can be sure that this measurement is at least 30. In addition to that, I can be sure that it's at least 36. What I'm estimating is between 36 and 37. So I'm going to guess. I'm going to say it's 36.8 because it looks closer to 37 to me. So, these first two digits I am certain of, but this last digit is estimated. Always make sure to estimate a digit when you're doing significant figures in measurements. Which measuring apparatus would you use to deliver 9.7 milliliters of water as accurately as possible? How many significant figures can you measure that volume of water with the apparatus you selected? If we look at these different pieces of lab equipment, they're going to limit our measurements. The first one looks about 9.7 to me. Now, I can tell because my interval is one milliliter. So that gives me the ability to measure that tenth place. If I look at the second graduated cylinder, even to say that this is nine milliliters is estimated because the interval is actually 10 milliliters. So I can only be certain of the tenth place the ones place is actually estimated. So this would not be a good choice for us. Something else you want to be aware of is that speakers are not good for measuring. They're really great if you want to do experiments in them, but they're not precise or accurate enough for measuring. So you always want to choose a graduated cylinder. So for our answer, we would want to use the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, which will be accurate to two significant figures. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson over significant figures. Please feel free to use your book, Chapter 2, as a reference if you need more help. I'll see you tomorrow in class for more practice.